I'm gonna sing and it's gonna be super embarrassing. It's a face taker, soul breaker, face shaker, don't you mess around with it. I'm giving you your money's worth in bad singing, patrons. <laughs> That's right, patrons, because today we're talking about the Point Horror Unleashed book, Face Taker by Philip Gross. The Point Horror Unleashed line were books published in the late 90s and early 2000s. As far as I'm aware, they were all by British authors and set in the UK, and somehow they're all just so much worse than regular Point Horror. Face Taker isn't the worst of the Point Horrors, there are definitely at least a couple that are worse. But it is one of the most confounding. It wants you to believe it's about an evil photo booth, but it's actually about a manipulative sociopath convincing his friends that the photo booth is evil. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Here's the actual book description from Goodreads. Photo kiosks always seem to be tucked away in some dusty corner. Some are quiet and so public and yet you're on your own. Do okay. Are they though? Because every photo kiosk I've ever encountered was in like the main course in the mall. Although these days, I guess most malls are kind of dusty corners. You put the money in and flash. Don't forget to smile. Flash for the face taker. Flash for the fate shaker. Flash for the soul breaker. It's so dramatic and not remotely what the book is like. So this book really, really, really wants you to believe that the photo booth is evil. But then throughout the entire book, photo booth does nothing. This sociopath convinces the kids in some mass delusion that the photo booth is changing their personalities and making them the self they want to be. And you think that's the message of the book. But then there's an end epilogue that's all like, so photo booths are fucking scary, right? No, no, they're, they're not. Okay, let me start out reading you the prologue of this book and then move into just the entire breakdown of what is going on here. I have like just so, so many notes here. There's always one somewhere, in the corner of the precinct, on the station forecourt, anywhere that crowds pass by, waiting. Day and night it stands there, glowing with a white light from inside. There's nothing to it, really. Just an upright chrome and plastic box, with a camera in it in a place you can't quite see. There are larger-than-life pictures on the outside. Square-jawed men, cute kids, and winsome women. As if for just two pounds fifty in the slot, that could be you. There's a small gray curtain you twitch across to hide you, like a confessional in a Catholic church. People go in there looking serious and anxious like that, too. Do they? Don't most people go into photo booths just to take some fun pictures with their friends? And who is going in there like they're going into a confessional? <sighs> okay, it's not tall enough to stand up in. Watch a grown man and you'll see him squirm in sideways, stooping. First, he'll have glanced a moment in the little mirror, pretending to be casual so he won't look vain. You'll hear the rattling sound as he winds down the seat, and you'll see his knees and feet beneath the curtain, shuffling as he adjusts himself, pats his hair, straightens his tie. Then he'll be strangely still, as if he's frozen in time. Then there's a blue-white flicker. Lightning. He comes out, sheepish, glancing at the slot where the photos will drop. If you're waiting for your turn, he won't look you in the eye. Why? He's just getting pictures taken. He wasn't in there jerking off, right? Day and night it waits there, glowing. People come at all hours. No one likes the pictures that it shows them, but they come. Somehow they have to, all the same. The only reason you wouldn't like the photos from these photo booths is because they're really shitty quality. Like, I don't think anyone's ever taken a good photo in there, but this wants to make it so much more sinister than it is. Okay, so what actually happens in this book? We have our protagonist, John. We don't find out his name for a little while because it's first person. So the first person we actually hear about is Denzel, who is the manipulative sociopathic little shithead of this book. So the book opens with John telling us how he's kind of scared of his friend Denzel 
Denzel has this power over people and he gives an example of this prank that Denzel plays on this older teacher who's losing his hearing. He starts out talking really loud, enunciating clearly so the teacher can hear him. And then the longer he talks to him, he lowers his voice until he's just mouthing the words. And not only is this just a shitty thing for him to do to the teacher, he exerts this power over the entire classroom to where everyone in the class starts doing this same thing, this same trick. Although unlike other point horrors, this isn't presented as, ooh, fun joke. It's presented as evidence of how scary Denzel can be, how the power and influence he exerts over everyone else is frightening, especially when the teacher, Mr. Pincus, actually has a breakdown and runs out of the classroom crying. And later on, John thinks he sees Mr. Pincus with the homeless people down on skid row or wherever this place is where all the homeless people hang out. Then we jump into the actual story where John and Denzel are in the train station and for the longest time reading this I thought we were talking about like a subway underground station. It's above ground trains like regular <laughs> choo-choo trains. Thomas the fucking tank engine is in this book. No, it would be better if he was. But they encounter the photo booth in this train station and there's a homeless woman inside. They call Alice the bag. They're really, well, Denzel especially, is super rude about her. They think she's sleeping in there. Turns out, no, she's actually dead. Denzel finds a sheet of photos in the little slot of this random pretty Asian girl. They they say she looks about 18 and Denzel claims they're still warm from just coming out of the machine even though the only person in the booth or around the booth is Alice and she's been dead for a while. So Denzel comes up with this story that oh these photos must be of some idealized version of Alice that was in her head like her true self it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's fucking stupid. I also don't think Alice is Asian, so that's kind of weird. At home, John's mom mentions his cousin Sarah, who John hasn't seen in a couple years, I think, even though apparently they live super close by. So they used to hang out together at family get-togethers. John's little sister, Kate, who I'm assuming is probably around 12. She seems 12-ish, so I'm just gonna go with that. She apparently thinks that John and Sarah were like into each other like romantically like point horror actual incest. Point horror is always pseudo incest. This is like VC Andrews incest. Anyway the whole point of thinking about Sarah is they used to play this game I guess where basically Sarah would just draw using felt tip pins on photographs and somehow somehow using fucking felt tip marker pins would turn these photographs into different photographs like she made a photo of John look like some old uncle they had it's so stupid and unrealistic like ooh Sarah is special because she can draw on photographs and make a photo of one person look different, photorealistic, even though it's with felt tip pins. There's no way. Maybe you could do that. No, you could definitely do that with like pencils, colored pencils. Definitely not marker pins. Are felt tip marker pins different in the UK? But Denzel doesn't think it's ridiculous. He thinks when John tells him all about Sarah and drawing on the photos, he thinks she's super special and has some kind of gift. And he wants to meet her because he wants to meet super special people and he's got some weird shit in his head about the photo booth being magic and Sarah being special. And again, this shit makes no sense. Everything about this book is super convoluted and yet nothing fucking happens. So at the train station, 
John and Denzel run into this homeless man. We never know his actual name because Denzel, being the lovely person he is, has nicknamed him Village Idiot or VI for short. So he is just called VI throughout the book. So John and Denzel run into VI and he's looking for Alice. They think he's a little mentally handicapped. I don't know because toward the end it's like he's got some kind of evil cunning so I don't even want to get into what the book is trying to do here. But he doesn't seem to understand that Alice is dead and amid all of this sort of pointless conversation he calls the photo booth the face taker. So there's your title for no good reason. So Sarah meets up with John and Denzel in the train station, at the buffet in the train station, because I guess that's a thing train stations have, and she brings her friend Claire with her. Denzel, being lovely once again, talking to John, calls them both dogs. God forbid a woman not be aesthetically pleasing to him, I guess. Anyway, at some point Denzel changes his mind about them being worthless and tells them all about the photo booth and they act like it's some completely amazing thing. Like, I guess the magic part is these photos of a different woman came out of the slot when it was the homeless woman Alice in there and I my god you guys, the number of times I was reading this book and just screeched why do you think this? What? Why do you think this? There is no evidence for this. What are you talking about? It's just, it's so ridiculous. These kids are morons. So they think the photos that come out of this photo booth are magic somehow. So Sarah wants to draw on them to make them even more magic and special. I know this is coming across as just incoherent rambling, that is what the book is. The book is not clearer than what I am saying. So we jump forward and at some point Denzel and Sarah went to the photo booth, but Denzel has taken two sets of these photos. The first set, Rachel, who the fuck is Rachel? No, Rachel is in the book I am doing a written recap of right now. So Sarah has drawn on these photos of Denzel. The first set, she just drew on them and aged him in different ways, I guess. And it looks realistic, but there's like nothing special about it, apparently. But the second set is apparently special somehow. She drew him in all different sort of guises and they're calling this set of photos the Jack, Queen, King, and Ace of Guys. Guys like boys, not guys the way I just used it. You know, you can figure it out. Somehow Denzel knew there was nothing special about the first set. So for the second set, he pricked his finger and bled on the photo booth and that made this set of the the suit of guys special and therefore he surmises you need a sacrifice to get the special magic photos out of the booth. It's exactly as fucking stupid as it sounds. So John goes in next and his sacrifice is the same. He pricks his finger, bleeds on the photo booth and I guess gets special photos out of it. He also does this weird thing. He he licks the pound coin before he puts it in the slot. Like, that's a thing I get. Like, dude, do you know how fucking dirty money is? You have so many diseases now. I guess at this point, everyone has taken their super special photos and Sarah shows up at John's house. And in the super weird point horror incest thing, Little sister Kate, like, hums a love song at them when Sarah shows up. Sis, what the fuck are you doing? They're cousins. Like, no one thinks it's weird. No one, no one smacks her in the head and tells her to knock it off. Like, no one thinks it's weird that she thinks her brother and cousin are gonna hook up. Anyway, Sarah has drawn on all these photos She's done the same thing like making playing card suits, the face cards of playing card suits, even though the ace is in there and the ace is not a face card, but okay, whatever. So Sarah has made her own suit, the Jack, Queen, King, and Ace of Dolls. 
her photos are beautiful. She made herself up into like hot girl, fairy, princess. Each one is different. She made John's suit the weirds and she made Claire's suit the ghouls. And Claire's are just super ugly. She made her pretty hideous. And she's like, I know, I know what it looks like, but this is what came out of it when I started drawing. It's totally the photo booth magic that's doing this. So at this point, I'm reading this and going, oh, so this is just an excuse to draw mean pictures of your friends. I didn't make you look ugly. The photo booth did it. I'm not being a complete bitch. It's the photo booth. They meet back up at the buffet in the train station and Denzel does this weird like tarot reading with the cards. They're cards now. Yes. I didn't mention that. Sarah has like pasted the photos on these cards and turned them into like actual playing card size cards that Denzel is now using as tarot cards. I mean, you can really use whatever the fuck you want for fortune telling. <laughs> of course, at this point, Denzel is claiming he has gypsy blood in him from his Hungarian grandmother. And it's 1999 when this book was published. So that's still a term we're using. Yay, 1999. It's all lies, of course. Denzel lies about everything. And he's cheating at the cards, stacking the deck to pull out the cards that he wants to put side by side to tell whatever. The fortunes don't even matter. I don't think I even wrote them down. Like, they don't matter at all. It's just some more bullshit he's doing. Oh, but also there is a tea lady at the buffet who comes by their table and screeches at them and kicks them out for doing the fortune telling and trucking with the devil. So yay, satanic panic. So they get run out of the station. They go somewhere behind it. I'm unsure of the geography of all this, but they run into VI who lets them look through Alice's cart full of all her possessions. They end up going into this like secret back way into a thrift shop, but they say they say it's house clearances, so I I don't know what that is, but it appears to be shit that's been cleared out of dead people's homes and just thrown into this storage shop that's not open. It's just like storage. So not really a shop, but it's just storage for a bunch of random shit is what it appears to be. So of course Denzel claims this place as their super secret clubhouse. John and Claire talk a little bit and Claire also thinks John is hot for his cousin. Why is everyone okay with this? Why is this what everyone thinks? Anyway, moving on from that, moving on from the strong incesty vibes of this motherfucking book, Denzel dresses Sarah up in clothing from the house clearances, dead, I, I guess, is this dead people's clothing? He dresses her up in dead people's clothing. It's fine. But he dresses her up as the queen of dolls. And I guess she's like super unrecognizable at first. It takes everyone a second to realize when Denzel brings her back into the room that this is Sarah because magic photos from the magic photo booth have transformed her or something, I guess. So Denzel admits to cheating at the tarot cards and the fortune telling, but still insists that the face taker is real and it's really changing who they are and just look at Sarah for proof or some fucking thing. And sometime after that, Claire makes John come with her to the house clearances. We're now calling it the wardrobe because they're just using it as their own personal wardrobe, I guess. She makes him come with her while she changes into like black jeans and a black leather jacket. And this apparently turns her into a whole different person. We find out that Sarah's sacrifice to the photo booth was just a bit of her hair. And Claire gave it a real sacrifice. Trigger warning for animal cruelty and death, by the way. She found a mouse that was being killed by a cat and she took the mouse and 
finished killing it in the photo booth and that was her sacrifice. I don't know why these kids think this photo booth is magic and needs sacrifices. <sighs> it's such bullshit. Anyway, this is what she saw in her photos. The black leather, I think they call her the the stray cat. These photos are the stray cat version of her true self. So she puts on this outfit, cosplaying as Joan Jett, I suppose, goes out, leaves John there. They all meet up back at the wardrobe later. I keep forgetting everyone's fucking name in this book. Oh my god. Claire. And Claire comes back in with like ice cream and booze that she shoplifted from somewhere and she claims that she doesn't really remember doing it. She was like in a fugue state and everyone is like, oh my God, this is so edgy. You shoplifted. I can't believe you did that. Obviously it was the magic of the photo booth turned you into a different person. So they go back to the photo booth. I have no idea what the timeline of any of this is. I didn't put it in my notes. It doesn't matter. The book jumps around anyway. I cannot track the passage of time here. They go back to the photo booth. Sarah decides to give it a bigger sacrifice than just like a piece of her hair. She brings mementos and photos and letters of a boy she had a crush on at camp two years ago and burns them. And somehow this is seen as a bigger sacrifice than Claire killing a fucking mouse because she was holding on to these for two years and they meant something to her, but Claire killed an animal in the photo booth. Sarah is burning some paper. That's not a bigger sacrifice. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. They get these photos. They each take one to draw on. And even though Sarah's the only artist, Sarah picks one and it's like a glam club girl. She dresses up in like a tight mini skirt and some something we're supposed to believe is like super edgy, edgy in a different way, edgy in a club way. I'm so sorry, friends. This shit has fried my brain. So she dresses up in her club gear and runs off from everyone gets into a club. The bouncers won't let anyone else in except then they do manage to distract them and John runs in and somehow in the like three seconds that they've lost sight of Sarah, she's like up at the bar getting guys talking to her and trying to buy her drinks and John drags her out of there. For some reason the bouncers and security are super upset about them running in and taking her and running out so they start chasing. Security starts chasing them. There's a dog, a German Shepherd, that <laughs> starts chasing them. Trigger warning again for animal death. John runs to the photo booth because apparently everything is like three seconds away from the train station in this town. I think at one point it's actually called a village, but I'm not convinced villages would have everything that this town seems to have in it. John runs to the photo booth and grabs a shovel. There's like a cleaning cart outside the photo booth. There's a shovel there for some reason. He basically beats the dog to death with the shovel, like right by the photo booth. And then for some fucking reason, he puts money in the photo booth to get photos because he just sacrificed a fucking dog to it. What are we supposed to feel for these characters? Am I supposed to like John? Am I supposed to feel bad for him being manipulated by Denzel? Am I supposed to like or care about anyone? Because I don't. I'm team photo booth. So John, instead of taking responsibility for his dog murder actions, he believes it's the face taker that made him do this. So yeah, the devil didn't make him do it. The photo booth made him do it. Just like the photo booth is making Sarah draw mean pictures of her friends. VI shows up and takes the photo strip and rips up all but one of the photos. And John looks at that photo and is like, yes, 
The photo booth definitely shows the hidden part of you. I don't know why anything is happening, so I just have to shrug and go with it. VI leads John out of the train station and Again, I can't figure out the geography of this place. Off, down, there's some arches and like underneath some stuff. He takes him away from the cops because now like the actual cops are after him or something. He like sings or hums a little song about the face taker. Not the one I did at the beginning of this video, something completely different, but John is unsure whether he's hearing the song in his head or if VI actually is singing, so that's concerning, I guess. They end up in a park where John, I guess, looks like a derelict himself. A guy on a date with a woman tries to give him money because he, I guess, thinks he's a homeless kid. But then John realizes, oh, this is his dad with a woman who is not his mom. And so dad is cheating and dad sees John and is like, why is my son looking like a derelict in the park? But they just sort of awkwardly don't talk about it right then. And then the next morning, dad comes into John's room and they have a conversation where dad thinks that John is on drugs and then tries to gaslight him into believing that he's not cheating on his mother. But I guess they kind of reach an understanding. Neither one of us ever mentions this again, especially not to your mother. So John is sick after this. He stays in his room, doesn't go out anywhere, doesn't talk to anyone. Claire shows up like three days later. Everything in this book seems to happen three days later. Every time jump is like three days later. I don't know why the author is obsessed with that. I guess in these three days that John has been sick, no one has heard from Denzel either. But she's convinced that the face taker is the realest thing she's ever experienced and they can't stop now. <laughs> They can't stop killing things and taking pictures of themselves now. But John somehow, actually pretty easily considering how convinced Claire was they can't stop now, he actually does convince her that they have to stop what they're doing with the face taker. He convinces her they have to stop and says that he will track down Denzel and tell him himself that they're not going to be sacrificing anything to the photo booth and taking pictures anymore. It sounds extra stupid when you say it like that. That is exactly, that is exactly what this fucking book is. So while they've been out of touch with Denzel, he has spotted the actual girl from the photos in the very beginning, the not Alice, Alice photos. And even though she's a real woman and not some hidden inner part of poor Alice, Denzel still claims that the face taker works and John knows this because he's seen it. And I'm just like, what the fuck? What the actual fucking fuck are you talking about? Seriously, what what have you seen? We've seen you play dress up and steal things. That's what we've seen. Literally it. So this real live not Alice girl's name is Mona. She's married to a video store owner and appears to be a mail order bride. And Denzel has learned all of this from stalking her, essentially. No, not essentially, literally, literally stalking her. He just happened to spot her one day and followed her to this video store and asked around about her and found out all this stuff. And throughout all of this, VI has been like hanging around and Denzel decides he knows too much because like VI returned some sweatshirt to John so he knows where John lives and somehow this is threatening and Denzel decides he knows too much and he's going to take care of VI. He very clearly means to sacrifice VI to the photo booth so that somehow he will be able to transform himself into the suave ace of guys and steal Mona away from her husband. 
And for some reason, John doesn't realize that this is the plan. He has no idea that Denzel is planning on killing VI because, let's face it, John is kind of a fucking idiot. John is supposed to meet up with Denzel at the train station later, but in the meantime, he decides to try to track him down at his house, which turns out to be a trailer that he's not living in with his parents. He's just living there all alone, even though I think he's only 15 or 16. But up to this point, Denzel has presented himself as rich. So John is surprised that it's not some swanky house out in the middle of nowhere. It's a trailer park. Claire shows up. So they look through the window and are able to see this shrine set up to Mona. There are photographs of her blown up. To all sizes, like Denzel is clearly in full stalker mode. He has photos of himself as the ace of guys who is like this super suave, cool version of himself. He's got them plastered up all over the place. It's real concerning and John and Claire are a little freaked out by this. Claire is a little bit smarter than John and she understands pretty much immediately what Denzel is planning to do and that he's planning on killing VI. So they go to the train station to hopefully get there before Denzel and find him, stop him before he does anything to VI. But when they get there, the photo booth is gone. They find out from the tea lady who ran them out calling them Satanists before. They find out from her that the photo booth has been moved, I think for repairs. I I don't know. So they head out to find the photo booth after also finding out from the tea lady that Denzel and VI were there earlier and Denzel put something in VI's tea. She thinks it was booze. Claire and John understand it was most likely some form of poison. So they run to where the photo booth is and they find it like overturned and VI is under it or inside it. And at first they think he's dead, but he's actually just unconscious from whatever was in the tea. So I guess he wasn't crushed by the booth. He was actually inside the booth and it was knocked over so he can still they can still pull him out through the opening on the side so they pull him out and make him throw up they're like afraid of him so they run away they run to the train platform where the train that mona was going on to go on some trip is supposed to be of course denzel found all of this out from his stalking so they think they're gonna find him there John and Claire board this train and VI is running after them because he spotted Denzel through the window of the train. So I guess VI is just like running on the platform beside the train like this man is gonna catch up with a train. Mona is apparently in first class which seems weird to me because she's the wife of a video store owner. Like that's not exactly a high roller but okay she's first class. They find Denzel and Mona in first class. He's dressed up as his ace of guys persona and she is clearly terrified. And this is where it's kind of confirmed that she probably was a mail order bride because she doesn't really speak English but she's like crying and begging Claire to get Denzel away from her because her husband is going to be mad and try to send her back. And it's also at this point that John appears to understand that all the face taker stuff was bullshit and it was really just Denzel manipulating them all along because he wanted to meet Mona. It all seems to be about her for Denzel and John kind of seems to realize that the book kind of seems to realize that and make it out like yeah Denzel was just manipulating them the whole time and causing this mass delusion among the three or four of them I guess it depends on if you think Denzel was really buying into his own bullshit or not. I don't. This little motherfucker knew what he was doing. <sighs> anyway the train stops VI gets on, comes after Denzel, chases him off the train. John follows them. VI and Denzel are like fighting on the railroad tracks, which seems pretty ill-advised because they get hit by a train. 
They get hit by a train. VI like pushes John off those tracks and onto different tracks. And John is fully expecting to also get hit by a train. But no, the, the train is on the track next to him where VI and Denzel are. And the train hits and kills them. The end? Except that's not the end. Because we have not a full epilogue. But like an epilogue paragraph. I'm gonna read this shit to you because remember how I said a minute ago both John and the book itself seem to understand that the face taker stuff was bullshit and it was all Denzel just manipulating them and being a sociopathic little asshole. The book seems to understand this but no because then we get this epilogue. It's This is very repetitive from the prologue, too. There's always one somewhere, in the corner of a crowded precinct. And it's always waiting, night and day. In the dark, it glows with its own cold light from inside, behind the small curtains. Does it? Like the moment when the house lights go down and everyone hushes as the film's about to begin. There's always one somewhere, just out of sight. <laughs> are there Are there photo booths just sneaking around corners and following you down the street because that's what this sounds like. People are drawn back to it again and again to see what face it will show them, the face taker. You've got to look. You must, although you know you won't like what you'll see. The end. I won't like what I'll see. I mean, that's true if what I'm seeing is this book because I don't like this book. I don't know what the point of this book is. Was Denzel a manipulative psychopath who incited a mass delusion among his friends and coerced them into doing terrible things and believing wonky bullshit? Or is the photo booth evil and everything was real and caused by the face taker? You can't have it both ways, book. You can't have it both ways, Philip Gross. It's one or the other. You seemed to land on it was all Denzel. And then you walk that back and hey, photo booths are scary and stalking you from behind dark corners. That's scary, right? No. No. not It's not scary. And I don't know what your point is. So like my personal theory is that this whole book was a hallucination by these kids breathing in too many toxic train fumes. In fact, that's basically what I said in my Goodreads review of this book. I'm gonna read you my Goodreads review because it's more accurate than the actual summary of this book? This is the touching story of a group of the worst kids you'll ever meet who breathe in too much train exhaust and think that sacrificing animals and homeless men to a photo booth will help them be the best at doing improv and playing dress up. Seriously, spending too much time breathing toxic fumes is the only reason I can come up with for why these trash goblin teens think that a photo booth is giving them the powers of, I don't know, extreme confidence? Dissociative identity disorder? Whatever, the logic here is baffling. Face taker, now with bonus, point horror assumed incest. Slurs against the Romani people. Ableism, poor equals evil. Mentally ill equals evil. Homeless equals subhuman. Stalking, animal cruelty. Mail order brides. Cheating dads. Is Johnny on dope? But it's also baffling and boring that I can't even be bothered to be offended by it. Why is Point Horror Unleashed so, so much worse than regular Point Horror? If anyone can answer that question, for the love of God, please let me know. I can't come up with any lessons for this book. Don't read this book. Go get some photo booth photos taken. Draw mean pictures on them. And <laughs> shoplift some ice cream. Go. I don't know. I, I'm I'm done with this book. I've read way worse books, but this this is the one that broke me. I'm I am a broken shell of a human, just waiting for the powers of the face taker to fill me with the powers of improv and shoplifting. <laughs> 
I'll see you next time. Thanks for supporting me. Don't read this book. I'm broken. I am a broken human. Goodbye.